Hello grade 11 students, welcome back again. This is Mr. Rowell with the next part of our Asteroid Game Tutorial Series. After the previous lessons, your game should be in a state where your ship moves, it has multiple different projectiles that interact with asteroids, the asteroids have some visual, visual feedback about how much damage that they've taken, and maybe you even experimented with how to actually get the hero to take damage. I'm guessing if even if you got pretty far along that, you might have come into a problem that's quite common for this, which is once the hero's taken damage, it's taking a ton of damage all at once. The reason for this is that if you think about this moment, I'm going to try and pause it right here, where the hero connects with the asteroid, where it's overlapping. Each time the game runs, it's ran a whole bunch of different act methods all in between those spots. Each time there's an interaction between these two things, meaning each moment the game's taking place, it's going to be doing damage to my ship, because I don't want to remove the ship right away. It wants to have some higher amount of health. So I'm going to think of a strategy to be able to deal with this interaction. In this first lesson, we're just going to set up the interaction in the first place, and then in the next one, we're going to be dealing with that more complex scenario, and also getting some visual feedback about this interaction occurring, and how we code in the resulting logic. Here's where we need to begin. We already programmed some collision logic in our asteroid, in this check contact method. We want to do the same thing for our ship, but in its own unique context, where it's interacting with the asteroid instead of a projectile. The first thing that I need to do is add a new variable in here. I need to give my asteroid some health. Didn't have health yet, oh, sorry, my ship some health. And now that my hero has a health variable, when my constructor, when this is gets created, I'm going to assign some value to it. I'm going to assign five for now. It's a nice small number for testing purposes. Now that I've assigned the variable health, I need to remember getters and setters to be able to access and change this information later if I need to. First of all, I get health, getter, or accessor. That's going to return the amount of health if I ask for it. And then a setter. That takes in a new amount of health if I want to change it from somewhere outside of this class. And I'm going to say this.health equals health. Okay, so I've added in the health variable. And I've changed my spacing here a little bit. I have my getters and setters for health. Now I need to think about how this health is going to change in this interaction. I'm going to borrow some logic from this method I already created back in Asteroid. Check contact. Feel free to pause if I'm going too quickly, but I'm going to try and go through this a little bit faster in this lesson. I'm going to create a check contact variable or method. I'm going to create a check contact method here in this project. Now, one thing I want to quickly note in the last lesson, it ended on kind of a bad note with something going wrong. I couldn't troubleshoot live. Here's what happened. If you recall, I did a bunch of spacing underneath my bottom method just so that it would be higher on the screen for you. Then when I scrolled up, I forgot I had done that. And so I thought that there was a glitch going on with the project. And so I tried to create a new endpoint, but then there was this extra bracket down here that broke the program and I didn't notice it because it was down below. Something that I did by accident, didn't notice, but I caught it after the fact. There wasn't anything wrong with the logic we went over, so I didn't have to record the video again, but that was the weird error that was going on. So leaving the space, maybe not the best idea. I'm going to leave it partially up there just so that you can see this nice and clearly. All right, so what do I want to do here? I want to check if my ship is contacting any of these asteroids. The logic for checking contact is here, but there's some wrong information. For example, I don't want to check if it's touching a projectile class. I want to check if it's touching an asteroid class. If it is, I don't want information about a projectile. I want information about an asteroid. Get one intercepting object. I want to get the information from the asteroid that I'm touching. I don't want it to be a projectile type. I want it to be of asteroid type. So I fixed a lot of this logic here. Now, my health is going to be decremented or reduced by the amount of damage done not by the projectile, but by this asteroid. Now, it's not showing up here because my program is being silly again, not showing some errors, but there should be a red underline under this right here, get damage. You notice my project isn't compiling properly. Get damage is having a problem because Asteroid doesn't actually have a get damage method yet. We haven't created it. Over here, we'll see that no get damage. In fact, I haven't even defined how much damage it does. Let's do that now. 
the amount of damage. Now you could make this variable, you could make this customizable. For now, I'm just going to say each asteroid will just do one damage each interaction to keep it nice and simple. That's the amount of damage it does. Now that I've created my damage variable, I want to create some accessors and mutators or getters and setters. Public int get damage will return. Oop, name just slipped. Return the damage that this asteroid does. And then later on, if I want to be more customized, I can actually change how much damage this does by going this.damage equals damage and assigning it to whatever information I pass in. We won't be using this right now, but it's good to have there in case we need it for a later implementation. I'll notice up here also that for some reason, I never actually put in the mutator or setter for health. Let's do that now, just so that we have it. It's always good coding practice to get these getters and setters in place. And this will just let me change the health if I need to for some reason. Maybe there's some kind of game mechanic that'll change later. So now we have the get damage method. If I click over here, it looks like it's compiling again. Hero, even though it didn't show the error, that was the error that was happening. Now I can actually change my health based off of how much damage the asteroid does. I'm just gonna remove this last line of logic. I'm not removing a projectile anymore. I could think about changing this maybe to asteroid.class, but let's think about the gameplay for a minute. This is occurring if I run into an asteroid. Do I really want my ship to be able to defeat the asteroid just by running into it? That doesn't sound like, to me, very interesting gameplay. Maybe there's some room in there for some interesting kind of side gameplay you could program in. For, for now, I don't want to remove touching at all. That doesn't sound like anything that's particularly fun to me. So, what do we have in place now? Our ship's going to be able to check if it's contacting an asteroid, and if it is, get the information from that asteroid, get its damage it does, and then reduce my health based off of that amount. Let's see if this is actually working here. We have this getter for health that shows health is 5. Now when I run my program, if I run into an asteroid, I should be seeing, if I pause my game, that value changing. I was having some troubles with this earlier, not updating properly. Let's see if it does. Well, actually, this isn't a problem with my program. This is a problem with what I've done to set this up. So it's not working. The interaction isn't working just yet. Try and think about yourself from what I've done here. If you can think of the reason why, pause to think for a minute. When you come back, I'll show you what the issue is. Welcome back. Hopefully you're actually following along with those pauses there and not just watching straight through. If you're being a keen student, that would be the case. The problem here, I've created a method, but I haven't actually accessed it. I'm just going to copy the method name up in my act. I'm processing keys, I'm processing mouse, but I'm not yet checking for contact. If I add this method to my act method, now each tick of my game, it's actually going to do so. Now let's see if we get some results from this. I clipped an asteroid. Let's get our health. I will notice it has changed pretty drastically, minus 23. Why is this number so significant? Well, it comes back to that issue I talked about earlier. Let's run this again. I'm going to try and pause it as I'm getting hit right there. Actually, a little bit further so I can actually click on my ship. Every single run of the act method as the asteroid passed over my ship, it was doing damage every single time act ran. I get my health again, it's decreased even more, quite a bit of a number more. This gameplay isn't going to be particularly interesting because the moment I get touched by an asteroid, it's almost guaranteed it's going to do all my health and damage way too quickly. In the next tutorial, we're going to deal with that scenario. For now, let's just set in an end game state. It's not going to be very fun to look at and play right now, but just so that we have the logic in place. If our health is less than or equal to zero, then we want this game to end. Here's one way that we can force the game to end. For now, it's just going to make Greenfoot, the running process, just straight up stop. The game is going to, what it'll look like to be freezing. And <laughs> my program's frozen now, just to add insult to injury. Oh, a little typo. Missed the end. How wonderful. Greenfoot, stop. There we go. Now what we'll see is if I get hit by an asteroid, my health hit zero, the game stopped. Notice it's still running. When it runs, it just the game just stops on its own because I ran out of health. So right now, I have a little bit more interesting gameplay. Ooh, 
notice the size of my the actual image is a little bit bigger than it shows visually, so that actually counted as, as a collision. That's something I can think about fine-tuning later on if I wanted to. But I do have a bit of an actual game here, finally. I can shoot these asteroids, and I can think of the win condition being I defeat them before they defeat me. But if at any point I get hit, I'm instantly dead because of the way this logic is working so far. Try and get these interactions operating in your game, and in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deal with this annoying scenario of it killing us instantly so that we can expand the gameplay functionality. See you in the next one.